It's not the plot of a scary movie. Actually, it's a real health alert from the governor, state health, and the CDC about a potentially life-threatening drug-resistant fungus spreading quickly across the country. Joining us now to talk about it, Upstate Global Health Director, Dr. Stephen Thomas, who we know is an expert in infectious diseases like this. Good to see you again, Dr. T. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jeff. Um, so it's called Canada Oris. Um, without getting too scientific, I mean, what is it? And is this a new thing or has this been around and, and has surfaced again all of a sudden? Right, yeah, so it's, uh, it's a yeast. Um, and they found it first in Japan back around 2009, but actually when they tested some samples even before then, they, they really kind of saw it back in the late 90s. Um, the problem is that it's been causing uh, invasive disease and killing people um, who are at high risk of infection uh, with this. And so that's why people are, are concerned because the numbers are really starting to grow over the last couple of years. I see. Um, obviously, um, still dealing with COVID, but coming off of what we've come uh, how do you get this, the Canada Oris? I mean, how does this one spread um, in comparison to, say, like a COVID? Could we all get it or? Right. Yeah. So, you know, one thing we don't have a great handle on is who is colonized with that. So what that means is um, you have it on your body, most likely your skin. That's where we think this particular um, yeast likes to live. Uh, and it doesn't cause you any illness, but you have it on your skin and you can pass it to somebody else um, through direct contact. The other way you could pass it is it also seems to like um, inanimate objects, so things like mm -hmm. countertops or blood pressure cuffs or stethoscopes, things of that nature. Uh, so that's another way um, that people can get it, which is why we get really concerned about rapid um, mm -hmm. hospital-based uh, hospital spread. Wow. You know, the people that are at greatest risk of getting sick from this are people that have been in the hospital for a long time, people that have underlying medical conditions like diabetes, or they've had an organ transplant, or they their immune system doesn't work uh, that well, or, or people who have had, um, because of their medical problems, they've received lots of antibiotics in the past for bacteria, or they've received uh, recently antifungals, so the medications that we use to treat uh, uh, yeast infections. So those are those are the people at greatest risk. Um, so would you say that um, I'm going to use the words relatively regularly healthy people shouldn't quite be as concerned and just your normal protocol, wash your hands, all those basic things that we always talk about? Or I don't want to undersell this, but I don't want to oversell the, the concern either. Right. No, no, I think that you're correct. So what we know right now, and again, I'm, I'm always the first to admit that we don't know more than, <laughs> more than we know, mm -hmm. but what we know right now is that there is a pretty specific type of person who is at greatest risk for getting sick from this, uh, from this yeast. So uh, yes, the, the average person that does not have these significant medical problems, uh, the risk would appear to be quite low. And the way to uh, further mitigate that risk is, is exactly what you said, which is maintain good personal hygiene. And the foundation of that and the cornerstone of that is frequently washing your hands. Any indication that it's here um, in our area, region, community? You tell me. Yeah, so, you know, New York, uh, Illinois, Florida, California, Texas, these are some of the states that have the highest uh, clinical case ca uh, counts. M clinical case counts meaning people who are sick and they get diagnosed with this um, yeast. Uh, but what we have not, we have not seen it in central New York, at least to my knowledge, and I work at a couple of the hospitals uh, locally. So we haven't seen it yet, uh, but I don't think it's a matter of if, I think it's a matter of when, and it's probably going to travel the same way that COVID traveled and influenza travels and these other drug resistant organisms travel, which is you know, that focused area on I-95 between New York and D.C., it ends up getting up to Buffalo and then ultimately finds its way to central New York. Wow. All right. Well, we'll certainly keep uh, keep watch of it. I know you as well, uh, Will, as well. So uh, we thank you for your time, um, and we will catch up soon. Thanks, Dr. Thomas. Okay. See you soon.